so what we're talking about yesterday just a second just a second hello yeah uh -huh. yeah sure. we are just starting yeah please join okay yeah sure thank you yeah. sorry yeah so uh, on the other day what we we're discussing we're discussing about aws regions and availability zones right Anything else we discussed apart from uh, regions and availability zones? No. <clears throat> so today what we will do, we will talk about IP addressing. The reason is, let's say you're working for any customer. Okay, customer has a data center in US my screen is properly visible or is there any delay it's it's good uh, Shrini okay fine and I have a remote office so and also, few people are working from home. In that case, how you will plan your network? Okay, in this picture, what is private and what is public network? Uh -huh. Zakir, good morning. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, I can hear your voice, but I don't know the rest of, for the rest of the people. Okay, fine, 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 fine. So, I, I just want to understand what is private and what is public networking within this picture. So, let's say. Customer is using some ten dot serial seeker. Okay, and the remote office is equipped with, and your home Wi-Fi is equipped with what? One sixty eight six. Now tell me what is the difference between any of all these things whether it is private all or public all are private all are private then what is public in this picture okay what is public in this picture let's say if i go to command prompt and I'll do the P config. So 192.168.42.134. This is my private IP. If I am a home based user, this is my private IP. And go to your browser and check for what is IP. You'll get some 
4 address still detecting yeah this is your v4 address that means this is your public fair enough because i've connected to my vodafone dongle so this is my public IP. similarly every home based user will have one public ip what about the remote office a remote office you will have let's say 500 people working on the same office so a company won't purchase 500 ips what they will do they will have one setup over here right and they will take an internet connection from two people okay two two providers in short <clears throat> so let's say geo and airtel it's like how i how it how i am using vodafone they have a dedicated leased line connections from these two vendors and these two vendors will give you some set of five public ips each mean you will have 10 different public ips at this point similar case other side again on the other side you have a two vendors okay so predictingly at and and orange on the other side so these people will give you some sort of public ips which are maintained by those isps so what happens every time when the when the traffic is leaving your home traffic is leaving your office traffic is leaving your data center it will pick one public ip and it will go same thing in your cloud as well but let's understand what all these private ip ranges and the public ip ranges within within ipv4 and then it's about AWS networking okay so, <clears throat> so I'll basically there are three classes which I have already represented in the same picture right so there are three IP classes which are already represented in the below in the side picture like this so these classes will start from what is the range 0 to 126 okay and what about the b 128.0.0.02 and he starts from 92 223 so what is the private range within the class a till what to what 10 dot uh, 1 dot uh, 0, uh, 0 to 10 dot 2 to 5 to 5 then not out the public 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 9 dot uh, 2 to 5 to 5 to 5 to 5 and uh, 11 dot uh, 0 dot 0 dot 2 to 126 for the last ranges Right. Similarly, class B will also have uh, some private range. What, what was it? 
Yeah, it's one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero two one seventy two dot thirty one dot thirty one dot two fifty five dot two fifty five. Seventy two dot fifteen dot two fifty five to fifty five and one seventy two dot thirty two to one ninety one to fifty five to fifty five to fifty five. Right? And what of the C? Private one small one. Yeah. One ninety two dot uh, one sixty eight dot zero dot zero. To one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot two two eight two five. Public again. The remaining one. Right. These are the total available ranges. Any examples? Within these ranges, the public IP examples. You see. <clears throat> Getting a response when I say go ready. One zero four, which is class A. Class B. You see, Class C. Right. So every IP address must be hosted in one of the every hosted IP address you see must be matching with your public range. Right now in cloud whenever you see most of the places or in even in a traditional way people will do the addressing like this. Just a second. What happened? Okay. So when I when I talk about IP addressing, let's say there is a small IP. What do you mean by this range? Anybody? What is the range for this? Two fifty five. You'll get two fifty six IPs. Okay. And in cloud, what happens? Zero, one, two, three, and two fifty five is taken. So you will get only two fifty one usable IPs. In traditional way, you will get 254. In cloud, you will get 251 only for every subnet. Understood? Now, let's say if you have a DB application, 
and there is no scope to increase it. So DB servers are there around 20 or 30 odd servers. We don't use slash 24. If you want, you can use the smaller one. So the num when you keep on increasing the subnet, the IP range will become a half. Which is 128. Okay. Again, the same, same thing. 0, 1, 2, 3 is gone. And 127 is also gone. You can use how many out of 128? 123 IPs you can use in cloud in this case. Okay. Similarly, if I'm increasing my subnet value, this will become a 64. The boundary is 64 and usable IPs are 59. Understood? 27. Then the usable IPs again minus. Twenty-eight. We'll get a six IPs on the boundary, but usable only eleven IPs. You'll get eight IPs the boundary, but you, your customer can have only three devices in the boundary. Five system will take care. Uh, system will use for internal purpose, and. Four IPs can't use in cloud. Thirty. No. Okay. Here we are missing something, right? Thirty. Thirty one. Thirty two. individual internet connection each IP will be allocated with slash 32 range that means let's say my my what is my IP address this one is my IP address now you try to ping you try to 42 dot one seventy two it won't ping okay see it won't ping I'll try 170 it won't ping because these these adjacent IPs will be maintained by Vodafone only or Vodafone pool only so what it will do it will assign the IP address in the form of slash 32 so when it assigns that, that you will get a clear-cut boundary of one IP so you can't ping the outside the boundary IPs so individual public IP will be assigned in the form of slash 32. So you can't ping any other IPs within that range from your IP. Okay, if your network mode is different as slash 32. So, <clears throat> and what I will do, and you keep on increasing the subnet value, then it will become 512. Keep on increasing 1024, 2000, right? So 24,000. 19 you have 8000 plus ips 18 you'll get a 16000 ip addresses for your boundary 17 you'll get a 32000 ips in your boundary 16 you'll get a 65000 ips so 
your slash 16 starts with 2 10 dot 0 dot 255 dot 255 which comes 65k usable IPs address space within AWS. What is the difference between 24 and 16? If you look at the 24 and the 16, what is the difference? The second octet and the third octet will exhaust, in this case, sorry, the first octet and second octet will not change both the cases. But in this case, if you look at the third and fourth octet are exhausted. And in this case, only fourth octet is exhausted if you give slash 24. So the best practice is we will use slash 16 at the address space level in cloud and slash 24 commonly used in subnet level. And if a subnet is, uh, let's say you design a subnet with the lesser devices, you can use any of these sizes till this. Okay, majorly I will recommend to use slash 28 only. Slash 29, 30 won't work, 31 won't work, 32 won't work. So slash 28 you can use and slash 24 is the commonly used subnet. Okay. How you will design your network in AWS. Shini, uh, have a doubt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, as a solution architect, are we responsible for uh, doing all the subnet calculations and all? Our network team will be giving that to you this range uh, uh, for the uh, deployments. Uh, it depends. If you are working for large enterprise, okay, the enterprise is in place since last hundred years. The well, well established enterprise since last hundred years, and you're working for one of the cloud expansion. They already have a cloud, okay. Let's say they already have a Azure, they already have a AWS and on premise everything. Now they want to go with the GCP. Now, then how you will design it? Yeah, pro obviously, you have to coordinate with all the people in the sense on premise network TDS, on premise architects as well as if you have any cloud azure or aws cloud architect who is already working and you are working on gcp for example then you need to coordinate with them accordingly you have to take a decision okay so actually uh, regarding the submit collection little bit uh, confusion is there um, so like um, so you just explained 10.0.0.0 slash 24 is uh, 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 related yeah uh, uh, having 254 ips so uh, means uh, suppose uh, this this decisions has to taken by a, uh, the uh, solution architect or like some other will be doing all this i mean decision has to take by solution architect or any other high high level architect will be giving no 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 let's see you are you are part of the migration in that case you know how many devices that you want to place it so let's say you have around 500 devices so you will not take slash 24 obviously you will take slash 23 or 22 that decides the factor Let's see, 500 devices. You already have a 500 device. What you will do by taking 512 IP range? Minimum you need 1024. So that the recommendation is 22 you have to select. Considering future growth is same subnet. Now you have, you have only eight devices at the moment to deploy. 
this is your application design. So you got the eight devices de deployment. So the best practice is go with slash 26. Why you are wasting so many IPs by creating slash 24? That you need to understand whether these eight, eight servers are stable or it is going to scale like Amoeba. Then you are you are going you are going to face some issues because if you design slash 26, the upper boundary is 64. So uh, currently you have eight and you can grow up to 64. What if they want to place 100 devices in this? They can't. So the, those kind of things you have to capture as part of your design. Okay. Then you can make a decision. Yeah. If customer is saying, application designer is saying, or application architect is saying, or a developer is saying, these eight servers will survive for now. What about the future growth? Let's say after two years, you need 100 servers to the same business because the business is rapidly growing. In that case, you can't expand it. That's a problem. So if they are if they are sure about the scalability and you can reserve the IPs accordingly. Also consider you are not wasting IPs unnecessarily by defining bigger boundaries. So that's the optimal calculations you have to do. If you are if you are not a responsible in some of the organization, you'll have a network architect in on premise. He already has the defined free ranges. He will he will offer you one of these free ranges. Now you decide which range where you want to use it and which range where you want to deploy it, whether it is a subnet level or outer space level. Okay. Uh, suppose uh, if we consider slash 24, uh, it is a 10.0.0.0 slash 24, right? So if we uh, uh, increase like 10.1. Zero dot zero slash twenty four means uh, what could be the range if it is ten dot one dot uh, uh, zero dot zero. Here uh, in, the, in that case, let me show you. Your IP starts from what you're saying ten dot one dot zero dot zero slash twenty four means ten dot one dot zero dot zero to ten dot one dot zero dot two. That's that's it. So uh, the ending 10.1.255 uh, uh, should not be considered, right? Uh, the no. third octet. No, no. The third octet will come into picture if you are using slash 16. Otherwise, slash 24 will end with the last octet. Okay. If you give slash 25. Okay. Sorry, slash 23. So you'll end up with like this. Okay. Yeah, little okay. bit. I'll show you. I'll show yeah. you in the networking part how to use it, all these things. Okay, okay, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, Shri, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, then I can't change the subnet CIDR on the fly, right? If I, my requirement goes up. If the requirement goes up, then the problem is, let's say I have a subnet like this 10.0.1.0.0 slash 24. I have a subnet like this. So in this subnet, let's say you have few devices. Those devices already assigned with some IPs, and now you decided to, no, sorry, now you decided that the range is exhausting, or the free IPs are exhausting. So what you can do, you can change at any point of time to say slash 23, provided you have the adjacent range is free. The adjacent range is not used. Understood? Okay, got it. Okay, but the problem is if I give slash 22, one will ask you to, to define the gateway. In that case, if you have defined your gateway, this is your gateway. When you make it as Ten 
10 dot 0 dot understood let's say previously i have defined the range like 24 this is the whole boundary and now you have decided to go with 254 is the gateway now if you make it 23 your boundary is like 2 till this 1.255 because you will get 512 ips no yes okay now what happens you have some range and you pick the last ip as a gateway and you again expanded the range is having some other let's say 10.1.0 this is 254 and you said boss this is my gateway later on you said you simply stretched back to this one and 1.254 IP you will get. So, for these devices also, the gateway is this. So, people won't understand sometimes the gateway might be the last IP or gateway might be the first IP. If you give a middle IP, even if somebody is trying to understand what kind of network configuration it is, you'll get confused. So, what, what the best practice is, if you are thinking about expanding these subnetly, so don't use this as a gateway. The recommendation is 10.1.0.1 or 10, whatever the starting series will use as a gateway and you keep on stretching this no issue. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise, if you are trying to change the gateway, the existing devices will lose the connectivity. You have to change the gateway for all of them. That, then again, it's a big problem. Okay, so in Azure, I guess it is uh, once the machines are created, we can't go and update the subnet, I guess. We have to yes. create a new. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm saying in traditional way, any at any point of time, you can expand the subnet. In Azure, once you create a subnet, you can't modify it. Yeah, I do agree. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. So that's what. So let's, let's go back to the basics. So from where we should start in the AWS, let's say you have a region. What do you mean by region? Let's say region is US hyphen East hyphen one is location in North Virginia. Right, let's go to console. If you see, this is one region and these are all the available regions so now now what happens the moment you log in into your console it will defaultly place your console in north virginia that means if you look at ns sorry ping simply access this one copy Man, it's a big problem. See, so console by default, if I access console.aws.com, the console will go to console.us.east1.aws.com. This is the IP. Where it is located? It is located in East US. Let me change this console to US East 2. Now, the moment you change the console, see the console address itself is completely changing. So, let's copy this. First address you see, console.us-east-1. Now you see, us-east-2.console. Address is, address range is, sorry, address notation is completely changed. Now you see, you, you got the response from different IP address. Okay. And let's say I want to go to Mumbai, AP South 1. 
again the urls keep on changing let's copy Fifty-two ninety-four eighty-four, fifty-two ninety-five twenty, and fifty-two two thirty-nine thirty-one. So every console address is connecting. Sorry, every console is trying to connect to the respective local public IP. Understood? That is, this is not the case with Azure. In Azure, you have only one thing, which is portal.azure.com but in AWS the portal will act according to the region so whenever you try to deploy something you will go to console.aws.com then you will be able to deploy anything in East US the moment you are changing or flipping into a different regions each region has its own console means each region has its own running software to provide you the console to to deploy or manage your resources within the aws okay these are all interconnected yes interconnected these are all working as a individual portals yes working as an individual portal right because each destination is different So, okay, I'm in East, East US and the location, geographic location is North Virginia. So, if I want to deploy something in this location, what I will do, I will create one, one network boundary. You call it as VPC, Virtual Private Cloud, and you can use anything as such. 16, or if you want, you can use or if you want you can use means this is like your on-premise only your logical boundary name you call it as virtual private cloud and based on the requirement or based on the design you can adopt any of the IP ranges either it is class A B or C doesn't matter but only the recommend only the recommendation is if you are working for a startup company, you can create anything blindly. If you are working for enterprise customers, then you have to plan it accordingly because your IPS should not conflict with on-premises or on-premise address spaces. Let's say somebody is blindly creating 10.2.9.0.0/16, which is already used in somewhere in the private organization. Let's say. Uh, working for ABC company which has the office in India and they have already used this range and if you are using the same range here it doesn't make any sense even if you create it it will work for the moment the moment you are trying to join this with your own premise it will say there is a conflict you can't join Understood? So plan these for your enterprise customers well in advance. Startups, it's fine. You can take anything. Now, the other question is, what do you mean by zones? Availability zones. Different, different buildings in one in one area in one within location the north, within the north yeah right within this location within east us aws is hosted with six different buildings okay so the, when i say six different buildings these buildings are within virginia only not outside Notation is US hyphen East hyphen one year a 
Okay. One B and so on. One F. This is the logical notation of your zones. Now your out outside boundary, let's 10.0.0.0 slash 16. So whatever the slash 16 that you take. What it means, you have a boundary of IPs ranging from this is the boundary for this particular VPC. Now how you will how you will segregate it so now you can segregate like this let's say i want to define a subnet first subnet like this let me place it in a different color okay if you look at this is the subnet one and the range is 10.0.0.0 slash 24. That means this boundary is till 255. That's it. Understood? And there is one more subnet I can create like this. Okay. For this boundary, what is the IP range? Let's say 10 dot 1 dot sorry 10 dot 0 dot 1 dot 0 24 and the range is from 1 dot 0 to 255. Fair enough? But if you look at the range, it is simply sitting on 1A. In other zones, it is not expanding. Means this is zone specific subnet. This is common subnet. If I want, I can create a third subnet here. Like this. Okay. And so on. How many subnets that I can create? within my VPC. Like this. <clears throat> I think there should not be any restriction on sub. You can have up to 255 max. Okay. If you create a 255 subnet, then you will exhaust. When I'm creating a subnet, if you if you look at the third octet is keep on changing for each subnet. Hmm. Right. So how many? And so on and so on. Last, how many you can create? 255 subnets if you are using slash 24. If you are using slash 25, you can use 512 subnets. If you are using slash 26, you can create 1024 subnets. You are just breaking the range by half. So if mm -hmm. I'm using slash 24, saying if I'm using a slash 24 and my address space is, my address space is this and I'm, my subnet address space is this. So if I'm using slash 24 within my slash 16 boundary, I can create a 255 subnets. All these subnets are subset of your boundary agree okay now you are creating slash 25 so all these subnets are subset of your boundary only but you can create 512 subnets because your ips become a half 
your number of subnets are increasing and you are wasting in a number of IPs. For each subnet, you will lose five IPs. Understood? Similarly, slash 26, your number of IPs will become, sorry, number of subnets will become 1024 in minus five in each subnet. How many? 5,000 IPs you will waste here. More than 5,000 IPs you will waste here. Here, 2,500 IPs will go waste. Here, around 1200 IPs will go waste. I will not say waste, you can't use it because Azure, sorry, AWS or traditional, these networks will occupy few IP addresses for internal uses. 0 and 255 for general network traffic and 1, 2, 3 for respective cloud platforms. If it, if it is Azure, 1, 2, 3 will be used by Azure for internal traffic, net, traffic routing and all. And if it is uh, AWS, AWS will use 1, 2, 3 for their internal routing. Clear? How to create yeah. this one? Let's go ahead and see how you can deploy this kind of... See? Very simple. Let me go to VP. Or if you scroll down, network <coughs> and delivery, you have a VPC. You already have few VPCs here. Let it be. I'll create one more VPC. Let's say VPC underscore VPC one. And what is the address space? 10.0.0.0 slash 16 is the address space. And you are not using IPv6 and we are not even discussing anything on IPv6. And none of these IPv6 are relevant. Okay. And default tenancy means where you are deploying this. What is What do you mean by tenancy? You can run the instances in your VPC on a single tenant, dedicated hardware. Select dedicated to ensure that instances are launched in this VPC or dedicated tenancy instances, regardless of what tenancy attribute is specified at the time of launch. Select the default to ensure the instance launched in this VPC use the tenancy attribute specified at the launch. Means, let's say a few customers, they want a dedicated hardware for their applications and they are ready to pay for additional amount. In that case, you must select dedicated tenancy. Otherwise, you are also part of the regular customers who are coming and using these services, what Azure, Azure or AWS offers without any dedicated hardware, then you can use in AWS called default tenancy. Create. Okay, that's it in AWS, but sure you have to provide a subnet and you have to provide all the stuff. In this case, I need to create a subnet separately. Create. What I will do, east us underscore vpc1 underscore subnet1. Under which vpc? East us underscore vpc1. And the general one slash 24 is the subnet. If you look at the associated CIDR notation, which should be subset of your existing CIDR. Create. Then created. And a subnet I will create like this. East US VPC1 underscore subnet2 under same VPC. But this time, I will not leave this availability zone empty. So, 1A. See my picture. 1A. First one, no preference. It is spreaded across all the things. If you set a no preference, the, the subnet will go and sit on every zone. If you are restricting subnet to stay at one place, select availability zone. You have a six availability zones, as I said, 
Okay, availability zone one, two, four, three, five, six. Okay, so availability zone ID and its logical name and network border group within East US only. So I will select one A and I will say 10.0.1.0.24 or if you, if you try to give 0.0.24 you will get an error it is already overlapped with existing CIDR you have already taken this so 1.0.24 and I want to create a sum that right so east us underscore VPC one underscore subnet three under same VPC, but this time on E. What is the subnet? Ten dot zero dot two dot zero slash twenty five. Instead of here, I will give a slash twenty five, and your boundary starts and ends at here. Fair enough. See, got created more than CP ranges. See, 123, normally 251. Look at my numbers here. The usable IPs, 251 usable IPs. The same thing I'm showing here. If you look at the subnets, subnet 2 are running with this, subnet 3 is running with 123. Which zone they are uh, attached to? How did we know Sorry. about that? Which? To which zone which? they they are uh, uh, means they will be utilized? Which zone? See? East zone. Okay. Okay. So this is to one zone specific. Okay. And how to see across the zone? It is subnet one. I haven't specified anything, but okay. it, is, it is it is defaultly created in B. And if you deploy the resources, it can deploy anywhere. Okay. And the one which I have created in one year, it is restricted, and all the devices it will make sure you deploy it in one year. Okay. And let's create the subnet four. Net East US VPC one underscore subnet four. Now, please make sure you are using ten dot zero dot two dot one twenty seven slash one twenty eight slash twenty five. Understood? Because this is uh, you, you have used second. A third subnet half range only half range is still available see if you see this is ended with 127 don't move on to 3.0 or if you are sure that this will go and expand in future then you can leave this if there is no such plan you can utilize this one create Another sub has been created. This one. Subnet four. Go to subnets. Subnet four has been created. Now see. Starts with one twenty eight. Okay. From 128 to 255, this range starts from, and it is sitting on 1EF. You can restrict like this. Okay, can't we use slash 29? Let's try VPC 1 underscore subnet 5. Ten dot. 0.3.0 slash 29. See, invalid. 
invalid. Sorry, uh, Shrini, if yeah. if we create or uh, <clears throat> assign a subnet to one specific availability zone, right? Mm -hmm. So I cannot create anything outside that availability zone. All my resources no. will be in that one availability so on, zone. On, on, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, but that availability zone it may be in the same hardware or a different hardware that we don't know. Correct? Oh, that availability. The background zone. that can be on any hardware. The, within the room, you have an n number of devices that you really can't decide mm. on which device you want to place the resources. If you create a two machines, those two machines may go and sit on the same hardware that you never know. Right, and that machine or that hardware, you know, it can have like multiple machines or multiple systems that we create. So that can be a shared one as well, right? It, yes. It can. It may not be a dedicated one, but. It's no, just your it's subnet is dedicated to that one zone. Yes, you you can't place your devices out of that that particular building, and then the backend hardware might be shared across hundred customers. Not only you, maybe other customers who log in at that moment who are creating a mm -hmm. servers. So those servers will sit on the same physical server, but this, your server. And other customer server will be segregated with the logical boundary called VPC. Correct. So, so what, what's the benefit of like having a subnet for one specific zone or shared across the zone? Like, what's the difference or benefit that we can have? If you if you place your devices spread across the zones, okay, mm -hmm. you can you can have a high availability. And you are designing your application, you manually want to put the devices into a specific zones. You create the subnets into a specific zones. Let's say you want to place two devices in two zones. If you create a generic subnet, that you can't decide where you want to place it. It will go and sit on anywhere. No, no, I want to restrict myself. I will design in this way. One subnet will be dedicated on one building. Another subnet will be dedicated on another building. You deploy two machines in two zones. And you connect to a load balancer that makes sure two, two devices will sit on two buildings, two different hardware, two different physical locations. So that if one building goes down, a second building will help you to achieve high availability. Okay. Understood. And the rules and regulations that we can the, the rules and regulations that we can impose accordingly. That we will discuss when we are talking about security groups or the net network ACLs or route tables. Then clear on this. Any questions yeah. on this? Yes. Any other questions from anybody? No. So, Shrini, uh, sorry, again. So, when we created the first subnet, right, we, we did not uh, give the dedicated zone or anything there. So, it directly, I think, created on 1B. 1B. Yeah. You, so does, does that, that mean, mean like my you, subnet is sitting on 1B or no, I can no, across create? You, you can, you, your devices might be deployed in 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. You know, you don't have any control. Let's spread it across all the zones. Okay. But your subnet logically is sitting on 1B. And when you place the devices, the, those will go and sit on anywhere. Understood. Now okay. clear. Yeah. Right. So if you have clear idea on what's going on, you want to make it happen into a restricted zone, then use the dedicated subnet level, sorry, dedicated zone level subnets. Cool. Okay. So, so both of them we created and okay. tomorrow what we will do we'll try to place the devices and we'll try to test it also if time permits we'll see how we can do the peering and all maybe tomorrow or otherwise day after tomorrow sessions gopal okay any questions so far, so far. right okay then i'll stop here today I will catch up tomorrow and we'll continue with the rest of the networking basics within the AWS and then we'll go with the lab scenarios.
Thank you. Right. So let me stop. Okay.